you find the Tom Finley place by leave takings. Leave home for California, leave the San Francisco freeway for university town yoga studios and coffee shops, leave those for a neighborhood of homes converted into student renter rooms, and those for streets deeper in, places with the last people of an older time. From there yet, up a hill to a footpath, that path and through a tiny forest to the Findlay place. Tom is four more flights up, in the trees with the birds. The toque he is wearing says magpies. No one says toque in San Francisco. Toque is a Canadian word. Tom is not a Canadian fellow except by habit. He has lived more than a half century in the Canadian bush. Tom is a Quaker. I've made this journey from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada to speak with him. The Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada Quakers are doing an oral history project in our beginnings. Tom was there for our beginnings. You could say that the Winnipeg monthly meeting sprang from seeds that he dropped, he and two or three others. This was in his Canadian years. He walked the trail from his cabin in the northwestern Ontario bush to the rail's edge, back when the train stopped for folks anywhere along the track and made the half-day's trip to the city. He did that from time to time, I suppose, often enough to help foster the beginnings of a Quaker community. We met whenever she came in off the lake, he says obscurely during our interview. He's 94 years old. He holds detail, but he doesn't seem to prize it. I don't pursue the facts of this statement. I know he came in for supplies and also to see the opera. But I've not come for the facts. He has lived an unusual life and his facts, confounding as they may be, have been closely recorded by his family and others. I can read upon the year that he left his grown family and the other trappings of success in his life as a scientist with a plan to canoe around the world. I can find the plans of the canoe he designed and built for the trip. I can look up the year when after his returning from the canoe trip he left again for the Canadian Northwest. Maybe it says there too whether he considered he was going into the bush for a year or two, but he stayed for more than 40. I can look these things up. But I've come to just sit with him, sit with the two strands of his taproot. He is Quaker and he has in his life literally and severely walked away from the common roads of the world. I've come to sit with these so that I might find their meaning. Because I have these things of his taproot in me too, to my degree. I have a shanty on land. Not all Quakers end up in the back country, but I already have that in me, the sense of the inevitability of a harsh destiny. I think maybe I came to see what a fellow like Tom would say about destiny. Listen to this story. Uh, another time I was out afternoon sometime in the day I was out on the lawn and this man walked in from down along the road along the uh, uh, and he said I'm looking for Tom Findlay and I said I'm Tom Findlay and he just laughed and he said my brother's also Tom Findlay <laughs> the man was his grandfather's brother Six-year-old Tom was living with his grandparents on Green Lake in Minnesota while his mother went to nursing school. He had uh, he'd come down hitchhiking, uh, riding the freight trains, but he knew that there was no stop between New London and Spicer and that th that's where they lived on Green Lake. Uh, so he had to get off the train because there was no way he would be able to get off the train as it went right through in our back our backyard. So he walked from there, 12, the 12 miles, about where he thought it was, and I was in the lawn there, so he asked, saying he was looking for Tom Finley. And I said, I'm Tom Finley. <laughs> it struck me then that the Quaker thing about Tom might not be his harsh destiny, although that is a striking thing about him. I see that Tom has the ability to remove himself from the world even while he's living in the middle of one of the largest cities in the United States. As I've turned it over in my mind, it seems to me that the Quaker thing about Tom, the inevitability, isn't a harsh destiny, but his willingness, his assumption, his presumption, his compulsion to stand plainly and say without hesitation, here I am. I'm Tom Bendley. I can feel that this, for me, is the call. I have groped through the words of Quaker theology and the morality of Quaker testimonies, but I could not name the pull of the Quaker way until Tom gave me the story. That it is for me to stand plainly before God in my community and answer clearly. 
If you're looking for Gwen Anderson, I'm Gwen Anderson. For the Winnipeg Quaker Oral History Project, what canst thou say? <laughs>